What's up guys, John here with Team Legit. Uh, today we're going to do the build video for the Nucleus board. We introduced this board to you guys a couple days ago and uh, now we're going to do the build video. As I stated in the previous video that I was going to do a swap over, a transfer of all the electronics and all the parts from a friend of mine's ZMR onto the Nucleus board. So uh, let's get started on the actual build. A couple things you're going to need is a uh, hex driver of the different sizes for the actual frame. A good set of wire snips and also uh, a stripper, a wire stripper if you guys prefer that. I actually strip the wires with the wire snips and a good soldering iron. Uh, a couple really good soldering irons I'll put in the description below. Uh, my favorite soldering iron was one that I had from Amazon. I believe it's a steel brand. I'll put the links in the description below. Uh, and that one actually just crapped out on me about two days ago after having it for about five years and JB welding it back together about two times it finally gave up so I'm using the uh, Haku uh, from Hobby King the uh, 20 25 dollar soldering station from Hobby King and it does the job very good but uh, I do have a new soldering station on order so enough about soldering stations let's go ahead and get down to the uh, transfer of electronics first thing we want to do is take the uh, parts take the actual quadcopter apart Oh, just a quick mention, if you guys haven't watched the build video for the Overcraft PDB, make sure you guys check that out. There's going to be a lot of variances, but then there's a lot of different things there you guys can check out. From there, you guys can see the ground up build of the actual um, PDB, uh, or the quadcopter with the PDB, with how to install the motors, the arms, things like that. So to see that video, you guys just click right here, and it'll direct you to that video. I suggest you watch that video real quick, and then come back over, and we'll use what we learned from that video to complete this video. So what I'm going to do real quick is strip this guy down so we have all the bare parts and components and then we'll get on to the actual soldering and the build of the ZMR frame. Alright guys, so I've got the quadcopter stripped down to uh, basically the essential parts that we're going to need to build from the ground up. If you guys are building from the ground up, you should be right around at this point. Now before we start to uh, actually start assembling everything, we're going to have to prep the PDB. There's a couple things that we need to do. If you guys remember on the other mini quad, I've got the standoffs already on the bottom plate. We need to transfer all these standoffs onto the PDB. We want to make sure that we get all of the things that need to be threaded or screwed in from the bottom in before we actually start assembling this. Another thing that I've got here here if you uh, zoom on in here is the nylon standoffs. I've got the little standoffs that need to go in here. This is what's going to hold our uh, flight controller into its spot so we want to make sure we put those in there because once you put the two plates together you can't get back in there. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and prep the PDB and we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so I've got everything transferred over, all the standoffs transferred over from the previous bottom plate. Uh, again, if you guys are building from the ground up, this would be a good time to put all them in. You can actually do this before or after the next step, uh, but what we're going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and solder in all of my header pins into the actual flight control, into the actual PDB. And if you guys are running the minimum OSD, I'm actually not going to install one. If you guys want to uh, have that installed. Uh, just check back with the wiki or check in the RC groups thread and you guys can see how to do that. I personally don't run an OSD but uh, if you guys wanted to now might be a good time to solder in your OSD. So we're going to go ahead and move over to the, uh, to the soldering station and begin the soldering process. Another thing to note is um, if you're going to be running the beeper, this is a little standalone beeper that comes in to your uh, with your PDB. You can either choose to run it on the bottom if you're going to run the spacers, or you can go ahead and solder it in from the top. Now would be also a good time to solder in the beeper. So at this point, if you guys have not already installed your battery leads, now would be a good time to install those. I've already had went ahead and installed them. I've got my positive and negative leads. I wanted to put my battery leads in the bottom, in the middle of the plate, so I went ahead and soldered them on the bottom. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is we're going to solder in the beeper. So if you want to get in here close, you can see how to solder in the beeper. Your beeper should fit in here nice and tightly. It's very simple. All you do is flip it over. We're going to get our soldering gun. And I've got a little bit of uh, solder. This is 6040 solder with rosin already inside the actual solder. So it just tends to just go on like cake, like butter. 
So let's go ahead and solder this in. Real quick, just to note, uh, there is a positive and negative to this beeper. If you put them in backwards, it's not going to work. And it's also indicated on the board the positive and negative. Another thing to uh, look forward to in case a little sticker fell off, the longer lead is positive, the shorter lead is negative. Some of you guys may get your board and this might be a really tight fit. You can simply just take a tiny little drill bit or a small blade and just open the hole up a little bit and it'll end up fitting in there. Don't force it in there, it'll end up breaking. So I'm going to go ahead and stick this in there. It's a nice tight fit. And as you can see, the pins now stick out from the bottom. And we're going to go ahead and solder those right up. As you see, the solder beads up nicely and gets into all the little crevices. And we've got the beeper soldered in there nice and tightly. Something that I like to do to make sure that the solder is nice and clean, once you've got that soldered in there and you're sure that it's nice and flush, we want to clip the ends off. And now there you have the beeper is soldered in. So we're going to go ahead and move on to the header pins. You're going to need a six header pin, uh, single row header pin connectors. We're going to try to include these with those, uh, with the kits. Um, you're going to solder them into the actual motor leads. As you can see here, we've got motor lead one through four, BEC and ground. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and stick this in here. Uh, it should fit nice and snug. If it doesn't, you could use your little helping hands to hold it into place. I actually um, I'm a little brave, so what I do is I'll just kind of hold it in there with one hand if I can, and I'll tack the completely other side. Don't touch this pin while you're soldering. You're going to burn yourself. So uh, just go in there. Once you tack that in there, that's going to stay in there. It's not going anywhere. And we'll go ahead and we'll solder up the rest of the header pins. After you've soldered the header pins, I always take my magnifying glass since my eyes aren't the best, and we make sure that none of the contacts are touching. It's okay if you accidentally get two of the contacts blobbed together, just don't power on the board. What you could do is use your soldering pullet and you can go ahead and heat up the solder and pull out the extra solder just to make sure that none of these contacts short out. Alright guys, we've got our header pin soldered in, we've got our beeper soldered in, we've got our battery leads soldered in. Now we're going to go ahead and prep the rest of the board and we're going to start the assembly. Okay, so uh, we've got all the contact soldered. We've got all of our uh, standoffs set in there. We need to set up the standoffs for our flight controller. Again, anything that you think is going to come in through the bottom, you're going to make sure you do that first. So I'm going to go ahead and put the little standoffs in there and the little M3 nuts to make sure that we have our flight controller and it has a nice place to sit. Okay, so now that we've got the PDB board prepped up, it's time to start the assembly. We're going to need to assemble our components first before we start soldering everything to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my top, my this is going to be now the bottom plate, and I'm going to take the arms in the order that they go. So I've got arm number one. So we've got arm number one, which is going to be the right rear. And what I'm going to do is just simply stick this arm in there and drive my bolts. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go through and actually install the rest of our arms into the quadcopter and then we'll move on to the next step where we'll start soldering everything to the actual PDB. As you can see I'm not threading in the bottom bolts in all the way because I want there to be a little bit of flex when I go ahead and put the other arms in there. Okay guys, uh, I've got all the arms assembled and ready to go. As you can see, they're nice and loosely fitted. One thing that I forgot to mention real quick is uh, before you before you put the two plates on, you might want to take a zip tie and stick it down in through here, through the designated holes. This zip tie will hold the battery cables in place a little bit better. So if you do have those fantastic uh, landings and things like that, uh, it's going to help with putting strain on the actual battery ties if, in case the battery gets ejected. So that way you don't end up uh, tearing any of the pads off or anything like that. It's a lot easier to do before you put the two plates together. We're gonna go ahead and tighten down all these bolts and then we're gonna go ahead and jump into soldering.
Okay guys, I've got the frame fully assembled. I've got all my bolts screwed down. One thing I forgot to mention as well is the uh, LEDs will not power on unless you short out the two component, the little spots that are on the actual board. You have to short them out prior to uh, assembling because you can't get back in there afterwards. But it's basically two pads and you put a little bit of solder over the two. That's what activates the LEDs. So let's go over to the soldering station and we're going to actually start soldering our motor leads and our ESC wires. Okay guys, I'm going to start with motor number one. As you can see, there's a positive and a negative side to these pads. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a quick dry fit just to see where they're going to go. And we want to make sure our ESC is comfortable and we're going to cut off the extra wires of the LEDs. Now in the other build that I did, I actually added up all these wires and the weight of the PDB and you actually save about six grams adding the PDB. So what we're going to do is we're going to strip the wires. I always like to add a little bit of the uh, flux, the solder flux to the wires. I just give it a quick dip right there. So this helps adhere to the actual wires a little bit better. Okay, now that we've tinned our two wires, we're gonna actually uh, tin the PDB. Now, there's two ways to do this. You can actually tin the PDB with the solder. Just kind of put a little bead on there. And then solder your lead right to the actual board. Or you can do it the quick way that I do, which is, uh, you gotta be very quick with this way, but you'll basically put the wire down, put your solder, hold it down real quick, add some of the rosin core solder, and you can do it that way. So uh, whatever way works for you guys, whatever is easier, um, I think it would be a, lot of, a little bit simpler for the newbies out there to go ahead and just tin the wires and then tin the motor connectors, add a little bit of solder, and then solder it directly down on there. Alright, moving on to the next step of the ESC. We're still working with motor ESC number one. So this long wire is now going to be eliminated. We're going to actually solder this right to the M1 port. And then what will happen is once that's soldered there, the trace will take the signal over to the corresponding uh, pin onto the actual PDB. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and find a nice length. We're going to clip that. We're going to strip the end. Add some of the flux. Tin the wire. Add some solder to the board. Since I am transferring this over from one quad to another, the red sig the red power wire was cut short for the other quad and they had tapped into the points over here on number motor number four. What I did here is I went ahead and extended the wire out a little bit because I want to use the power off of this and in order to do that you need to tap into motor number one. So what I did is basically just installed a little extension on there, put a little heat shrink, and we're going to solder this down to the BEC point for motor number one. This will allow you to get power from here. So when you plug your six wires from here into the flight controller uh, to control the motors, you will actually get power from here to power the receiver. And we're done with motor ESC number one. And you don't need a ground because it's sharing the ground from the actual uh, power point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and slowly move through the rest of the board in a uh, clockwise, in a counterclockwise motion and solder the rest of my wires down on there.
All right, guys, there you have it. We're done soldering all these. Um, as I mentioned, I didn't have the positive lead because it was cut short on this particular ESC. So I went ahead and soldered it here so you guys can see that. But as you can see, look at how clean that looks. That is probably one of the cleanest setups that you could ever get. Uh, so uh, one thing to make sure is before you apply any power to this board, go back, double check and triple check. Make sure go negative to negative, positive to positive, signal signal positive negative make sure all your colors go through and make sure you do all these things it'd be very simple mistake to make is if you swap the wires up plug power to it you got an esc down now you got to wait a couple days for team legit to send you some new parts okay guys the next part of this step may or may not apply to some of you guys we're going to be running the naze 32 or the dragonfly 32 it's basically the uh, flight controller that you can operate clean flight or base flight on. Now I've got myself here a Dragonfly 32. This is one of the earlier versions. It comes in blue. We no longer stock these, but we do have the black versions. You can also get these uh, uh, in the pro version with the barometer and the um, magnetometer already assembled to the board. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually make this the cleanest build that you can ever get as far as receiver goes. Um, I know some of you guys are going to be running the uh, FR Sky, so if you guys are going to be doing those, you'll have to look at the RC group said because I personally don't use FR Sky. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to install a Spectrum receiver directly to the board. And I've done this a couple times and it works really, really well. So if you want to come in here, uh, we're going to have to prep the board first before we can actually put it onto the actual flight control, onto the actual PDB. Let me grab my... All right, so we're gonna have to solder a few pieces to the actual flight controller to get the proper signal wires. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna solder in our motor points. So we're gonna start with the motor number one here and motor number two, three, and four. We only need the signal wires. So we're gonna go ahead and solder this little block in here like an L shape. So we'll have ground, power, signal for motor number one, motor number two, motor number three, and then motor number four. Then we're gonna solder in this four block here right into the actual VBAT and the uh, beeper ports. What I'm gonna do something unique here is uh, I've got a Spectrum receiver. This is actually a Lemon RX six channel receiver. As you can see, I've bent the bind pins off to the side. And the reason for that is I'm gonna solder this receiver directly to the actual flight controller. So if you can see that there, my pins are gonna stick out from the bottom and I'm gonna solder this directly in here. The reason I put the bind pins to the side is that way we can bind the receiver to the actual transmitter. So let's go ahead and get this over to the soldering station, get this soldered up and we can go ahead and install into the PDB. All right guys, no matter what receiver you're gonna be using, you want to make sure you have uh, some pins here. Uh, for my case, instead of soldering the header pins into here, they're already soldered onto the receiver. But in your case, you, may wanna run, you might wanna run the three row pin, the header pin here. Uh, I'm gonna skip that for now. But on the other side, you don't need all the little five volt uh, ground and uh, power signals on your receiver. So what I've went ahead and done is I've just got my three pin here and three pin here because we're going to tap into the power from here and we're going to use the signal wires on the rest of them. We're going to solder our VBAT and we're going to solder our buzzer. Okay guys, the easiest way to do this is uh, set your pins into place and then get a little piece of tape and just tape it down into position and now they'll stay there while you solder. Once you've tacked down the corners or at least one pin of each one of the blocks, you can remove the tape and go ahead and solder the rest of the little pins. Okay, so we've got all of our pins soldered down. These are the only ones we're gonna need. The VBAT, the beeper, the ground, five volts, signal for motor number one, two, three, and four. And now we're gonna go ahead and install our Lemon RX receiver. So we're going to line this up to receiver channel number one, which is throttle. And there you have it. There's our receiver sitting on top of the flight controller. So now I'm going to go back through and solder up the rest of the pins.
You essentially don't need the rest of these pins. However, I'm just going to go through and give them a little bead. Okay guys, so we've got our flight controller ready. Now we need to prep the board to accept the flight controller if you're using the NACE32. What I like to do is reutilize these little wires that came with the uh, that came off of the ESCs. What we're going to do is we're going to use two of these here for our VBAT and our beeper and we're going to use the third one for our video transmitter. If you guys are like me and you're running the immersion transmitter, you'll see how I wire these all up. Alright, first thing you want to do is you want to take the signal wire out. So what you'll do is use a blade, lift up the little tab, pull the little signal wire out and we're going to slide this back. Next thing you want to do is take your wire cutters and very carefully cut the end off here and now we've got a two pin wire so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and put this on our flight controller we want to make sure that the, the polarity is correct so for the beeper it's positive and ground so now we'll go ahead and lay that there and we're going to go directly to the buzzer port so what I always like to do is cut this just a little bit longer just so you have a little bit of slack so we've got this wire now set up for the beeper and we're going to do the same thing for the VBAT. Lift up on the signal tab, take that out and we're going to cut the end of the servo connector. Alright, so now we want to line this up for the VBAT. So on the Dragonfly 32 board We'll make sure that the polarity is correct. And we'll run the wire to the VBAT port, giving us a little bit of slack to move. And the reason I add the extra little bit of wire is because once this is tacked down, you want to be able to pull this off and not have it on there too tight. So let's go ahead and back to the soldering station and solder these two to the actual PDB. All right, so we've got our wire stripped and ready to be soldered to the board. Give it a little bit of flux. We'll go ahead and tin the ends. We'll add a little bit of solder to our board. Be careful not to add too much heat to the standoff right near the standoff. And now these are polarity sensitive. It says plus and minus, so we're going to go ahead and solder down the positive. All right, now we've got our connections for our beeper. So if you see here, we stick our flight controller in there and we've got the VBAT port set up. We've got the buzzer port now set up. We can put our motor two through four and our motor one with the ground voltage and signal. Alright guys, so we've got everything uh, wired up here to our board. We're going to give it power for the first time. As you can see, we've got our ground, positive, and signal from motor number one going into the ground, positive, and signal of motor number or uh, motor out motor input number one, output, I'm sorry, of number one. And then we've got the white, red, and black, which are no longer ground, negative, and ground, positive, and signal, which are signal, signal, signal for two, three, and four set up right here on the flight controller and then we've got our VBAT system set up here all plugged in there so now when we power this guy on we should get life to the actual flight controller I'm going to go ahead and stick a bind plug into the receiver just to make sure that it's binding and as you guys can see the Dragonfly 32 powers on and we've got a rapid flashing red light on the receiver which means that it's in bind mode so at this point was when we would bind it to the transmitter but uh, we're going to go ahead and continue on the build I'm going to show you guys how to wire up your video transmitter and your camera one thing I want to mention is that I, the way that I installed the Dragonfly 32 board allows you to run your USB port out the side. So when you go into the base flight or clean flight software, you'll have to calibrate your board in a 90 degree angle. So let's go ahead and move on to the camera and the transmitter step. 
Okay guys, if you are if you're like me and you're not going to be running an OSD like the uh, Minim OSD, you're going to have to short these two pins out. And the way you short it out is basically put a dab of solder over the two pieces here and uh, make sure these two pieces are shorted out. The easiest way to do it is just get in there and put blob of solder and if you put enough in there they'll join. Okay guys, so now we're going to go ahead and move on to the FPV gear. I'm going to show you guys how to wire up your immersion 600 milliwatt transmitter. If you're using one like I am, uh, you could use the last battery lead or the uh, ESC signal lead that came off of the ESC. So what we're going to do is we're going to pretty much figure out where you're going to place it. Uh, just for now, you can go ahead and plug it into the bottom just so you can get the lengths. So I'm going to go ahead and place mine here. There's the four pads here that we're going to go ahead and... Uh, Fine, and we're only going to use three of those four pads. So we're going to use that spot right there. That amount of length is pretty good. So we're going to cut the wire down to size. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead, same thing, we're going to pull the signal lead out. So now we've got the signal lead. This is going to act as our video signal, the signal from the uh, actual camera. Uh, if you have the last ESC signal wire, what you can do is pull out all the little strips and use the little cap for it. I like to do it just to isolate the signal lead. So now we've got that set up there and we're going to go ahead and get our wire cutters and we're going to cut the end off. Be very, very careful. This part is very important. So once you've trimmed it down to nice and uh, flush, you can actually plug this directly into the immersion 600 milliwatt transmitter. All right guys, so your wire will end up looking something like this. And as you can see, the immersion 600 milliwatt transmitter, you've got ground battery, and we're gonna focus on the vi little video point there. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and line that up so we've got the ground and battery, and if you push that in there, that'll sit in there nice and tight. It actually locks in there better than the actual immersion lock. And then we've got our signal wire. We put that in the very first port. Doesn't matter which side you put it on, because we're gonna take it and we're gonna just stick it right here and it'll line up right to the video lead. So now we've got the video out, I'm sorry, the video in, ground, and power. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and solder this down to the board. We're gonna do the same thing with our camera. I'm using the PZO 420 600 TV line camera. This is the best camera for your uh, money, for in our opinion. And uh, you've got the same color wires here. So as you can see, you've got those there. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna solder these down here. So let's go over to the soldering station and I'll tell you where you need to solder your points. Okay guys, so uh, it's very important to figure out if your camera can accept 12 volts or if your camera runs on 12 volts. If you're running a Fat Shark camera, you're going to tap into the 5 volt uh, camera port here. If you're running a uh, PZO420, those run on 12 volts. If you're running on the new PZO420M, the micro version, that can take a very wide range of 5 volts up to 17 volts. So you can run it off of a 2S 5 volt from a five volt up to a four cell battery without harming anything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and solder the camera pads. I know my camera is a 12 volt uh, camera. So what I've done is I've already tinned up and added some solder down to the PDB down to the 12 volt. This is the filter 12 volt. So what happens is the power comes in from the main, it gets filtered through the LC filter and it comes out here in clean 12 volts. We've got our ground and our video signal here. If you do have a 5 volt camera, you've got a 5 volt port right here that you can actually tap into. So you would tap in your ground, camera, and your 5 volts back to here. Okay, our camera is now set up and we're going to set up our immersion transmitter. So we're going to go ahead and just tap this in. Again, make sure your video transmitter can handle 12 volts because coming from here is 12 volts. Uh, if not, you can run the uh, 4S uh, port right here with the, with the step down or voltage regulator.
So there you have it guys, we've got our video system set up here. Now a lot of you guys might be running the minimum OSD, again like I said I don't personally run it. If you are going to be running the minimum OSD, there's the pads here, you just actually uh, get the minimum OSD and you put the uh, single row headers soldered directly into your board, you'll do that prior to actually uh, putting together the board and you'll drop your minimum OSD and make all your solder points there. I'm sure there'll be a tutorial out for that soon. Um, we'll try to get our hands on one ASAP so we can show you guys how to solder that up on another board here. All right, let's go ahead and move back over to the desk. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and plug in my camera. And as you can see, that fits right there nice and neat into the actual PDB. And then we've got our top plate. So basically, all that's left to do from here is to uh, button down our hatches, put down the top plate, screw everything in, program the clean flight or the base flight. Alright guys, there you have it. There is the complete build video for the Nucleus PDB. Uh, if you guys have any questions, don't forget to leave that in the comments below. If this video helped you, don't forget to click the like button. And um, if you guys have any questions, leave that in the comments below. We'll try to do our best to answer them. If you haven't checked out the RC Groups thread, make sure you click on that. Also in the description below. And um, if you have any questions and maybe your setup defers a little bit, we'll do our best to try to help you out. If you are using the FR Sky with the RSSI and trying to use the full potential of this board, uh, please check and scan the QR code. You'll get a lot of useful information out of there. I want to thank Wads of Quads for creating this board. I want to thank uh, all the subscribers for watching and uh, Ian for being on the camera. I'm Johnny with Team Legit. Thanks for watching. A couple of the cool features that you could do with the OTG cable, a USB micro, and the NAS32 using your Android device. So uh, I've got the USB micro cable here. We're going to go ahead and plug that in here. Then I'm going to go ahead and plug this here in the NAS32. 